Nah, you need uh, how many mil? 50 mil, okay, to make that the uh, gas exchange will be impact. Okay, just 50 mil, 50 mil for 50 kg body weight. So what happened after the plate enter the lung? So the vagusna will be stimulated. It causes vessel constriction of the pulmonary vessel, and this can cause pulmonary hypertension. So for fresh water. Uh, we diffuse rapidly across the alveolar capillary membrane compared to the salt water. Salt water will damage the membrane, while the fresh water diffuse rapidly across the capillary membrane. Uh, and uh, surfactant will be denatured by the fresh water, but will be washed out by the salt water. So the difference between uh, fresh water and salt water drowning. Uh, one is regarding the uh, diffusion around the uh, along the capillary and alveolar membrane. The other one is the spectrum. Okay. Uh, so in both salt and uh, fresh water aspiration, compliance will be decreased. So it will affect the diffusion capacity uh, process. Second, it affect the spectrum. Second, uh, third, we're gonna affect the compliance of the lung. So this is the, you know, what the consequences of drowning, uh, drowning for salt and fresh water. Uh, this is the sign and symptom of drowning. So body is wet, cool hand and leg. There's a bleach decoration or the lips, shivering, restless, uh, coma, before coma, conf uh, confused, and then frothy discharge from the mouth, patient vomited. Increase and decrease rate of breathing. It might be also already uh, stop breathing, or maybe patient gasping, and you might hear the abnormal sound, gurgling sound, and then when you examine the past, bradycardia because of hypoxia, and then cause a bradycardia. Initially, it's tachycardia, but by the time when you examine patient, it's already bradycardia because prolonged hypoxia. So you may also found okay, some uh, foreign body or algae attached to the body. If there is no reading, no pass, patient already developed cardiac arrest. You need to resuscitate, not to resuscitate? Yes, you should try. Resuscitate patient uh, up to 30 minutes. If 30 minutes no response, you stop it. So that means the patient already died. So these factors suggest uh, there is an aspiration. Uh, one is uh, if the head immerses too long, and then uh, inhale uh, during uh, drowning or patient uh, choking. Okay, after you manage to bring the patient out, okay, from the drowned side, and uh, loss of consciousness, the spray or amnia. Uh, this suggests, okay, this is a near drowning case, and then this patient actually requires CPR. So, if patient requires CPR, that means less like less like likely this patient have a aspiration. If there is episode of amnia, is likely this patient have an aspiration. If patient is unconscious or choking, also is likely this patient have an aspiration. Aspiration. So, this is the sign that this patient might be a new drowning and aspirated. The symptoms include cough, sort of breath, retosternal discomfort, and then clinical signs, cyanosis, tachycardia, tachypnea. But if too long, okay, have, uh, apnea, the, that might be a bradycardia. Huh? If tachycardia, that means still good indication, still early. Uh, you might hear the wheezing and crackle in the chest. Pink frottis putum, uh, low uh, GCS, uh, Glasgow Coma Scale, and then when you um, do oximetry, it might be low, okay, pass oximeter. Yeah. So, this is uh, the first aid for drowning or near drowning. If a patient not responding, no breathing, no pass, what you need to do, you actually follow like the first uh, uh, lecture just now, cardiac arrest. Huh? You call for help, uh, call the emergency service, open the airway, quite often you will see a lot of fluid there. How uh, you want to remove that fluid? Huh? 
So you might do a chest compression, okay? Put patient at the prone, uh, prone position. You compress at the back and make sure the plate will come out first. After that, put at the supine position. And then you give a five rescue breath. Uh, and then after that, follow, uh, see whether after that patient uh, can breath or not. If cannot breath, that means you need to perform the CPR. With 30 to 2. This is for adult. For infant, 15 to 2. Okay. But for adult, it's a 30 to 2. Uh, and then uh, if there is a defibrillator, and then you attach to defibrillator and then follow the instruction. So the rest uh, step, okay, processes is similar to like the first lecture. Uh, CPR. Uh, so CPR. Apart from that, let's say you saw patient drown. Uh, make sure you prepare yourself before you help this person. Uh, before you jump, make sure you use life jacket or you have a wooden piece rope uh, wooden piece or you have a rope uh, before you catch the patient okay otherwise they will catch you you also will be drowned uh, before you jump to the water make sure you have this and then if you want to rescue them make sure you rescue from the underwater not from the space uh, if they saw you you try to help you so we, he, they will he will grab you and then you also will be drowned. You also become panic. So therefore, when you want to try to rescue, make sure you rescue from the underwater, not from the space. Uh, let's say patient already flat, uh, not responding. Okay, maybe gasping. So cannot struggle, cannot uh, grab you. So what you need to do? Lie the patient in the flat space. So after that, remove all the clot, wet clot, and then make the patient warm. So this the patient is not gasping or uh, not apneic or not arrested. Okay, if arrested, you do a CPR like the first lecture. If patient still have a breathing, uh, normal breathing, maybe some uh, problem of breathing, but the rate is still normal. And then uh, after you compress the chest at the prone position to remove the water okay in the lung uh, maybe also in the stomach is too much patient swallow the water the abdomen might be distended may cause a uh, compromise the diaphragm movement so you might need to move it otherwise it's not so much uh, just put patient and then lie supine position okay at the flat face huh? so if patient is uh, asystole or maybe a bradycardia and patient unconscious and then uh, you need uh, ABP cannot fat, uh, pass cannot fat or very slow, very feeble, small and then you need to do a CPR. So the step similar to the first lecture. Uh, this is how you assess patient look, alert or not. Listen the heart sound and you have status code uh, but at the uh, which man are the stethoscope, okay? And then see the air passes through the nostril, present or present. Uh, the rest are sama lah. Uh, maintain ABC, maintain the injury. So this is the first aid, huh? near drowning. Left lateral position. Clear secretion, clear the foreign body. If uh, too much water, you want to remove the water, you may need to do patient, put patient in the prone position. But it's not so much, put the lateral position first, clear the secretion. Huh? And also for in body. Don't insert anything in the mouth, okay? Example spoon. And then head tilt, chin lift, like just now, okay, in the first lecture. And then your trust to prevent from the tongue fall. Huh? And then after that, you loosen the tie, the cloth, okay, around the neck and then remove the other artificial dentures uh, if possible. So, remove excess water. How you want to remove the excess water in the lung and the abdomen? So, by turning upside down. Eh? Turning upside and down. You can do this one or not? For children's neonate, infant is okay. For adult, not possible, is it? 
So therefore, you put at the left lateral position, you press the abdomen. This is for that. Uh, if you want to put in the prone position, okay, you press the from the back. But usually you put at the lateral position, so you can see the water coming out from the mouth. So you put at lateral position, you just press the abdomen. This is for adult. But for infant children, you might be able to do turning up and down, okay? Turning outside and down, okay? After that, you press the abdomen. Uh, this is to remove the water from the lung. Yeah. And if patient conscious, you assess the patient. After that, transfer patient immediately to hospital. So in the hospital, the evaluation include blood gases, X-ray, ECG, electrolyte, blood urea, and then regular monitoring of respiration, uh, electrolyte, and cardiac status. Complication uh, for those with uh, aspiration and asphyxia. Uh, include cardiac arrest, adrenal cardiac arrest, pulmonary edema, pneumonia. This is few days later, okay? Uh, when patient admitted to hospital, uh, patient can develop stroke, can develop cerebral edema, renal failure, metabolic changes, metabolic acidosis, electrolyte imbalances, hyperkalemia, hypernatremia, and then uh, infection. Uh. So in summary, this is an important point, okay, for drawn cases. Rapid resuscitation at the skin is vital. CPR should be continued for over 30 minutes if necessary, especially in a temperate country when there is hypothermia. It's evident. But in our country, temperature is quite okay. Unless at night, early morning, it might be a temperature low, but not as low as in the temperate country. All patients successfully resuscitated, and those less unwell with feature of expiration, uh, this patient should be transferred to hospital. And while transferring this patient to hospital, the patient should be on 100% oxygen. Uh, this is a case, but you just read it. Okay, this patient survived. Huh? This is a near drowning, not drowning. Uh, fast oxygen, huh? this patient have a crepitation in the lung, and then SpO2 only 85%. I would the chest actually is clear. So this is actually as a wet, wet drowning, good dry drowning. Wet. Wet or the clear? The lung is clear. Yeah. But SPO2 at that time was 85%. But in the lung, you can hear the crackle. So wet or dry draining. Is wet rainy because can hear the crepitation. If crepitation that mean eh, patient aspirated. Some more the oxygen also 85%. So why the chest is ray clear? Because patient inhale press water. Press water when you examine the lung, chest is ray will be clear. Huh? I like patient inhaled body body or maybe uh, some mud that you inhale, uh, then the lung might show something. But fresh water, sea water, when you do chest chest, the chest chest will look clear. Uh, so, Dato, uh, but just need to list, uh, he vomited up copious sea water. Uh, if possible, he vomited out and he uh, first expirated from vomiting, and then you might see something in the lung. Uh, but if oh. it is not vomited, not expirated from the stomach content, it's just purely uh, sea water or purely uh, fresh water. Water and then uh, just stay open clear. So then just look at the lung. You look overall. Look for the lung. Any crepit, not crepitation. No. Look for the oxygenation. Uh, and then no. And then uh, okay, this patient will be made in hospital. Huh? Not uh, made at home. Also, this is an example of uh, wet drowning, but there is evidence of wet drowning. Evidence of impairment of the gas exchange, but the chest is still clear. So good prognosis or poor prognosis? This is poor prognosis. Uh, the patient vomited up copious sea water. Huh? It was given uh, oxygen. 
by the third club third club and then the ambulance came after that huh? but when the ambulance people examine you found that low oxygen reputation there after that when patient arrive hospital just actually clear so good prognosis lah first of all patient uh, is not uh, uh, comatose and then still having breathing and then uh, you should be able to clear okay the lung huh? you just uh, uh, put a rice tube and then aspirate lah but suction okay the lung followed by uh, suction of the stomach okay not stomach okay the 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 oral cavity and also the lung through the nasal cavity yeah. to be clear the water okay aspirate the water so usually the, like this one is good uh, prognosis in terms of the outcome so the problem here actually the the people who in charge in the club and then this is why the drawn thing has happened so this patient need intensive monitoring or not this is new drawing press water you see water Where did it happen? Uh, sea water and the ocean. Huh? Clubhouse. Hmm. Beach patrol. So that means in the in the beach. Ocean. So salt water. Salt water. So it can uh, wash out the uh, wash out wash out the uh, uh, spectrum and also uh because disturb the uh, disturb the gas action okay so that why the oxygen concentration uh, spo2 is 85% so mm. because of that this patient need intensive monitoring whether this patient require respiratory support or not so what to do this is why on the way to hospital eh? uh so in the hospital you still can do more suction use a rice tube through the nose after that, monitor the oxygen. SPO2 back to normal, no need to uh, put one ventilator. But after some time, let's say three hours, two hours, still got reputation. Uh, SPO2 still low. Uh, then uh, blood gases source, uh, metabolic acidosis. And then this patient need uh, uh, respiratory support. Okay. So this is an example of case uh, with low SPO2. Uh, need uh, monitoring in the ward. We need hospitalization, need monitoring. The outcome usually like, that, like, like this is okay. Any possibility of uh, brain damage or not this one? 85% SpO2. So 67 years old without uh, medical problem, without stroke. So most likely this patient uh, end up without a neurological deficit because patient is conscious. So in the so in the ward uh, in the hospital the patient might be able to uh, uh, so treated with oxygen uh, oxygen may be more than ninety percent okay if more than ninety percent uh, so usually no brain damage so good prognosis okay there are few other aspect in uh, drowning uh. you are the this group of society okay called as e penyelamat. Uh. So this actually to train people, okay, uh, how to be trained in how to save people to do CPR eh? in uh, those who are drowned, uh, new drowning. Eh? They have club and they, they train. Uh, and then perhaps they like UPM also they have a cost and then they will still fight them. And the cost is actually online like cost. Uh, it is still fight them. So this is a 10 action okay, to prevent drowning. Okay, you can read it. Uh, this is a policy okay, and registration regarding the drowning. Okay, how to prevent it, you can read it. So this is uh, one uh, of the way how to uh, prevent from drowning for children. Okay, that means you have to train, uh, to train them. Uh, when they got drowned, what to do? You can read it. 
Okay, that's all. Okay, any question? No. Doctor, be uh, uh, may I know what what is the scenario for dry drowning? How we differentiate? Oh, dry drowning. Dry drowning can happen either in the fish, uh, in a salt water, and also can occur in the fresh water. Uh, it's very, very, not many, okay, about 10% or less than 10%, maybe 20% more. Because of patient uh, choking, okay, or patient uh, vomited uh, during drowning. And then after that, cause vaso, uh, not vasospasm, bronchospasm. Uh, bronchospasm. And then there is no, there is, uh, and then the lading also close, because the lading close. The fairing close because of that spasm. There's no water enter the lung, and also no water enter to the GIT tract. Uh, because of that, it stimulate the parasympathetic activity. As a result of that, we can develop a bradycardia. It might be also cardiac arrest. Uh, but if patient manage to be uh, uh, somebody okay, have, have, okay, and then uh, patient develop. A near drowning, but this is a called as a dry a near drowning. It's not the wet near, uh, near drowning. But in because dry drowning, no uh, uh, there's no submission in the water. Uh, that can happen either is submission or whether it's mission or submission it can occur in both. Hmm. For example, in submission, okay, what happen? Okay, you inhale or you swallow. Okay, the water while the water well, during the splash, okay, and you inhale, and then what happen? You become choke, and then become bronchospasm, not bronchospasm, uh, the the spasm around the upper airway. After that, patient struggle, and then uh, there is no water enter the lung and under GID tract. Uh, this it is uh, called as a dry. Same thing when uh, emotion happen, okay. Uh, emotion happened and then you aspirated and then uh, somehow okay uh, become bronchospasm. Mm. Uh, bronchospasm. You swallowed, uh, you you inhale it, but become bronch uh, after that become bronch uh, become bronchospasm, uh, and then it stimulated the parasympathetic, uh, and then because of that persistent bronchospasm. Uh, piston bronch uh, piston uh, spasm of the upper airway, and then there's no inhalation at all. Uh, this also dry. So actually can happen in both. Mm, okay. Any more question? So I hope you know how to handle eh? a patient with drowning at the skin area, at the skin area, at the, for example, the beach girl, the water, waterfall girl. And also A and E also, or in the ward. You know how to handle huh? running case. Okay, enough for today. So next week, timetable, I will uh, uh, WhatsApp to you. Huh?